in linear algebra, there's a special set of vectors called the, the standard basis vectors. And these vectors are going to look somewhat familiar. So in R2, in, in two-dimensional space, the unit vectors are the standard basis vectors. Um, so another name for them that we might see is, is unit vectors because they are one unit long, but they're the standard basis vectors because they're considered the, the simplest vectors that span that entire space. So the one zero vector in a two dimensional plane is a vector that points one unit in the x direction. And that guy looks like looks like this. And a lot of times we'll use a lowercase e to represent that vector. So we'll write e one and we'll call that the one zero vector. And then the zero one vector is a unit vector that points along the y-axis, one unit vertically, and we'll call that E2. And it's pretty evident, I think, that we can get to anywhere in R2 that we want with these two vectors, uh, because we just need to scale one horizontally as far as it takes to get to maybe some point out here, and then to scale the E2 vector vertically to get to that location in the Y direction and then sum those two vectors together. Now in R3, those vectors look similar, except notice that the one zero vector in R2 is the one zero zero vector in R3. And we'll just say that that points one unit in, again, in the X direction over here. And we'll call that E1 and that'll be one, zero, zero. E2 is kind of like E2 in uh, two dimensions, except it has a zero Z component, so it points one unit in the Y direction like this. We'll call that E2. And finally, E3 will point one unit in the vertical direction, in the Z direction. And so that is the vector E3, which will denote 0, 0, 1. You see, for every direction that we add, we need one additional vector and one additional 0 in all of the existing vectors from the previous dimension. In this case, again, we can get to anywhere we want in R3 because we can, we can go in the x direction as far as we need with E1, in the y direction with this, uh, as far as we need using E2, and in the z direction as far as we want using E3. Now, in general, we could go on, we could say R4 would be 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 0, 1. But we're just going to jump to the, the n-dimensional generalization. So, as you might imagine, in Rn, your E1 vector will be 1 followed by a bunch of zeros. So that'll take us only in the direction of that first component. E2 will take us only in the direction of that of that second component. E3 in the direction of the third component. And then finally, somewhere over here, we'll have En. Now, we don't know how, how big N is, right? N could be 100, and so these could be 100 by 1 vectors. But the idea is that each vector contains a 1 and only 1 position, and therefore can take us in exactly one direction. Now, the key here is that once again, every vector in n dimensions, you know, this could be five dimensions, six dimensions, two dimensions, three dimensions, whatever, can be written as a unique linear combination of the standard basis vectors E1 through En. What we mean by unique is there's only one way to do it. So if we consider E2, And I pick some point, let's say over here, and we'll call that just generically. Uh, we'll, we'll call that, well, let's give it, let's give it an actual label. Let's say this is negative five, negative, negative 17. Well, to get there with the standard basis vectors, uh, I'm sorry, not negative five, positive five. Positive five. 
To get there, well, we would need to take the unit vector, five or five times the unit vector in the x direction, so five times one zero, and then we would need to take negative seventeen, negative seventeen times the zero one vector, and when we sum those together geometrically, putting them together tip to tail, well, we end up getting the vector five negative seventeen, which is precisely the location that we would like to be at, and three dimension a three dimensions a similar idea holds but perhaps we want to get uh, maybe three dimension three direction three units in the y direction two units in the x direction and perhaps we want to go maybe five units in the z direction so somewhere somewhere up here we want to get to that point and we'll call that point two three five well, that means we need to go two units in the x direction. So if we'll take that one zero zero vector. I will take two copies of that. We'll take three copies of the zero one zero vector and five copies of the zero zero one vector, which will get us to the location two three five. So it's not super hard to see in two and three dimensions that we can get to anywhere we want using these. And there's only one way to do it. There's no other way that I could get to 2, 3, 5. If there was, that means at least one of these constants would have to change. But if I, for example, change this 2 to something else, then the, the top component would change explicitly in that same way. If this were a negative 2, then my vector over here on the right would end up as a, as a negative 2. And I want, I want it to be positive 2, positive 3, positive 5. So there's only one way to write that. And an interesting, an interesting principle here is that notice that this is a linear combination of, of these three vectors. And so what I could do here is write this as 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 times 2, 3, 5 equals 2, 3, 5. Okay, so that means that that twice the one zero zero vector, three times the zero one zero vector, plus five times the zero zero one vector will land me at the location that I want to be at. Another way we might see this written is in place of one zero zero, we could write E1, E2, E3. These are, keep in mind, three by one vectors. These are each three by one times two, three, five gives me two, three, five. And this might look familiar when we solve a system of equations. When we do get just exactly one solution, we end up with this, which we later refer to as the identity matrix. And this indeed is what we expect when we get a, a single solution. So I like to think about this as, as these standard basis vectors. If our system reduces or our augmented re matrix reduces to the standard basis vectors, 1, 0, 0, let's say 17, 0, 1, 0, negative 5, and 0, 0, 1, 6. This gave us exactly one solution. Namely, if we called these columns x, y, and z coefficients, and these were our constants over here, this would tell us that x equals 17, y equals negative 5, and z equals positive 6. So there's a, a, a connection, a strong relationship between the standard basis vectors and the idea of a unique solution.